Ugh. Music streaming! Why download your music when your music could download you? The place to find an unstoppable sea of music. There's so many of these guys, from the big and well-known to the obscure or defunct. Being able to just open up an app and be bombarded with free asterisk music is amazing, and the features they have can be really cool. But with so many of them, are some actually better than others? Do they all sound the same? And which one of them is the definitive king of them all? So in this video, we're gonna explore these bad boys, see what they got to offer, see what they're hiding, and maybe even find out why I kind of hate these things a little bit. There's a big reason. Which one do you use, if any? Let me know down below. And if you enjoyed this video, then consider subscribing. It means a ton. Anyways, let's get into this. Enjoy! I wouldn't mind checking out a streaming site in this vid. You know, people are uploading music onto these things constantly, with Spotify saying there's over 60,000 songs uploaded every day. That's a lot of Thomas. That's cri- What? Someone did the math that it's more like 20,000? And Spotify just inflated the numbers? Also, you're actually speaking gibberish and I'm just putting words in your mouth? You can't trust anybody! And there's a dreaded under 1,000 mark. I'm sorry to any artist that's in that right now, but every time I see that, I feel like I'm on the wrong side of Spotify. There's a lot of these guys, like a lot, and they got many costumes. The big ones, of course, being your usuals. Let me blindfold myself here. Spotify, Apple Music, YouTube, hey, that's me, Amazon Music, and Deezer. I always see you pop up in articles and stuff, but like, I've never met a single Deezer. Wait a minute. Technically, the most popular streaming site on the planet is YouTube, but globally, for actual music, the biggest three are Spotify, Apple Music, no surprises there, but third place, actually a tie between Amazon and Tencent Music, a Chinese service. Last year, Peeps estimated there was over a half a billion subscribers across all these sites, and that was last year alone. I can imagine it's gone up crazy since then, at least by one. I have mixed feelings about streaming in general. On one hand, it's such a great and convenient way for me and you to listen to anybody you want, whenever you want, asterisk. But on the other hand, I feel there's even more a disconnect between me and the artists, like there wasn't one already. Before, there was a drive to go to people's websites and check out other stuff they did, or go to intermediate websites like Bandcamp or SoundCloud, which just feels more closer to the artists. Maybe because you know it's actually them uploading the music instead of Jacob G Stream doing it. Because we have so much music at our disposal now, it's a lot harder to become invested into a piece of work Work, knowing I can find 20 other people doing the same thing really easily. And versely, as an artist, it's a lot harder to stand out on these things, which has led to a lot more people getting creative in an attempt to stand out. I, I mean to stand clout, my bad. You also hear all the time about artists getting screwed from companies over how much is being given to them off their streams, because, you know, it's not enough you're making the music. You don't need all that money, too. What, do you need to eat? Nah, you make TikTok. Now, obviously, not all record companies are the son of Satan. Some are actually the son-in-law. But man, it's hard to believe streaming took over in a Snap. Everything happened so fast. The switch from physical to digital, that couldn't have been a smooth transaction. Well, if I want to start somewhere, I could start at Napster, the first significant music sharing service on the internet that was created by two guys, Sean Parker and Sean Fanning, in 1999. Napster was a peer-to-peer -peer program, meaning the files on there came from other people's computers, meaning anyone could upload anything they wanted to, and you, the poor, poor fool, would download files from their computer. But that's the thing. You could put any audio you wanted. All you had to do was name it. You could label it Britney Spears Oops, but it's actually just some guy eating an apple for three minutes. The start of many gamblers addiction. Sometimes you'd get 50, sometimes you'd get these. Pick your poison. In fact, around this time, everyone's favorite cranker Soulja Boy would use these services to trick people into downloading his music by retitling his tracks to the top songs at the time. A true pioneer. Personally, I never used Napster as I was still a wee infant. Also because it was illegal. <laughs> get him out of here, boys. Me? I would never use that. I use LimeWire. I was way too young to even begin to even think about using a computer, so Napster was before me. It's kind of crazy, all their legal troubles really began literally a year in, in 2000, when Metallica found out a demo of their song I Disappear was being passed around on the service, which upon investigation, found everything was on there. Dr. Dre found a similar case with his stuff, and thus the ball got rolling. This would all culminate into a lawsuit followed by the RIAA, which basically represented all the labels, and after one of the most important lawsuits in the history of music, it was forced to shut down in 2001. 
Napster was gone, but by then, it was too late. The impact it had on the music industry was enormous. We're still feeling the shockwave of that today, because with Napster brought the idea of online music, and since that was planted in people's brains, it ain't ever coming out. A bunch of copycat programs would come and go and cement online music as a force to be reckoned with. But pretty much after the lawsuit, the record biz quickly realized they had to come up with something fast that belonged to them so this wouldn't happen again. The answer would come through the invent of the online music store, websites and services allowing people to buy their music directly and play them either online or on their own MP3 players. Those rocks. A bunch of stores were made around this time from a multitude of companies, but the largest and most stable one would be iTunes, created in 03 to stand beside the iPod. But one of the first dedicated streaming sites would be Deezer, a French site launched in 07, which planted the idea for a dedicated music streaming service. <laughs> Sure, buddy, like that'll catch on. The next year, Spotify would launch Do the Shimmy Online, and the rest is epic rap battles of history. Microsoft tried a bunch with services like Zoom, which had their own line of MP3 players and streaming services across Xbox called Zoom Music Pass, which turned into Xbox Music Pass a bit later. The Zoom Music Pass later evolved into Groove, which eventually evolved into nothing because it got discontinued in 2017. I kind of feel bad for these guys. They were trying so hard, just not where it mattered. for uh, Ugh. Okay, let's have a look. Aw, oh, sweet, it's an early access pass to this new streaming site opening soon. Sweet. That makes me think, like, in the grand scheme of it all, this stuff is still pretty recent, and companies are still trying to figure out the best way to milk everyone's wallets. I wonder what all the patient zeros thought about this tech, like the first wave of people that bought into this stuff when it was still in development. Now I've been talking about the old stuff, but we're in 2022 now, Bytes. So what are some other streaming sites anyways? Well, there was Beats Music, created by the Beats Boys in an attempt to do their own spin. But after being bought up by Apple, they merged that service to eventually create Apple Music. There's also Tidal, when that launched, was a place to get high def lossless music, where you could actually support your favorite artists more directly, and all these big artists would come putting their music on there exclusively. Until they didn't. Kanye West's sixth album, The Life of Pablo, was slated to be a title exclusive, and it was, for a couple of weeks. And in that time, over a million people said, hell no, and proceeded to acquire their own copy. Good times. I'll say Spotify's got some arguably nice features to it. Did you know Spotify has its own voice assistant? Yep, it's in the settings near the bottom, at least right now until they move it again. But before to activate it, you have to hold down the search icon on the app? Who is doing that? I don't know why you'd ever want to use this thing, but it's there. Spotify in particular has a pretty good algorithm. Them. They definitely focus more on the personal aspect of music, kind of like it's its own social media. And that's totally intentional, like you can follow others, like playlists, they know what they're doing. If you're just listening to tunes, their Spotify radio feature kicks in, that mini radio station that plays once you finish something. I've honestly found some really good artists through it, I can't even lie. There's also that short looping video that plays behind certain songs, that's actually called Spotify Canvas, and before it was only available to people with a certain number of plays, but now everyone can use it. These are always fun to look at, because everyone becomes a mini director or just gets lazy. Apple Music is a weird case. At one point, they were the biggest streaming platform around when they made the switch from iTunes. If you weren't an Apple head, you were rocking the Pear phone. But it was after Spotify started becoming more personal with their stuff, like their end of year rap stick, that people ended up making the switch. They've been trying to real peeps that game with things like lossless audio. Guys, don't worry, we're not losing it. Using Siri to request songs easier. <laughs> what are you gonna use, Bigsby? And as people pointed out to me, Apple Music does allow gifts now. Looks a little weird if it wasn't intended, but the feature is appreciated. They didn't update Donald though, but uh, don't watch that. Now so far, I've been sounding like a walking billboard for these guys, but they ain't sponsoring me. That's the VPN's job. Cause as much as they got their goods, it's gonna take a bit more selling, cause I got my qualms. There's one big issue I got with these guys, and also the free version suck, but that's not the main issue. The biggest issue is the fact that there's a lot of songs and artists that just aren't on here. There's tons of reasons for this, such as sample clearance, label disputes, and much more. But because of that, it's like every third song you want has gone MIA, and labels know that. Some artists actively make an effort not to put their stuff on these sites, and mainly Spotify for the way they handle things on the business side. But some artists are in a constant struggle to get their stuff on here, or had it at one point, and now is gone. At least they tell you what you lost, unlike the Red Boy. I find it more an issue with mixtapes, because most artists don't get the rights when they make the songs. So I'm pretty happy about the small push of art 
artists who are big enough and got the moolah that started putting their stuff on here, like Mac Miller, Joey Badass, and ASAP Rocky. But at least for me, that's one of the major things stopping me from completely switching over to these guys. Because as much as I enjoy the convenience, nothing beats having the song in my library. Anytime I can listen to those awful samples in the OG Ready to Die, and you can't stop me. Did you know Spotify also has a couple Easter eggs? These only really worked on the browser version, but did appear on mobile at one point. So if you type in THX1138 in the search bar, your progress bar will actually change into a lightsaber, and you can click it to change its color. The search being a reference to George Lucas's film debut of the same name. There was also a Stranger Things Easter egg back in 2017, where sometimes, if you listen to the songs from the soundtrack, your screen would become a Stranger Thing. And lastly, the coolest Easter egg of them all. If you listen to anything from the new Minions movie soundtrack, the coolest thing will happen. I'll make fun of you. Streaming sites are pretty cool. A place to really unwind and take in the beauty of the world. It's a, it's a pun. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you haven't already. And oh my God, is that River Joe? Hi everybody. I think I'm low.